Hi students, welcome to session 3 of Water and its Importance. In a previous session, we discussed about uses of water and water which is an important natural resource. So we will continue this water, this water and its importance session in which we will discuss about different states of water and also we will discuss about cloud formation. So let us start with today's session and learn about different states of water. Now you must be very familiar with this. That in nature, water exists in three states. And it could be in the form of liquid, rain, for example, rain, river, sea. Or it can be in the form of solid, for example, ice, snow, hail. Or it can be in the form of gas. For example, water vapor or steam. So basically, there are three basic states of water, solid, liquid and gas. However, we know that there is also fourth state of matter, matter but we will discuss on the three of them. Now solid is the most stable state and in solid, all the particles are held together by intermolecular bonds and they are held rigidly in fixed positions but vibrate randomly in their positions. So this state takes the least amount of heat energy to form. So solids have both fixed shapes because of the rigid bonds and the volumes due to there being no space between each particle. And in liquid, for example, rain, river, sea, there is enough heat energy for the particles to break free of their bonds but are still held loosely together by some forces called as intermolecular forces. So the particles may slide and roll over one another but may not drift away from each other. So liquids have no definite shape due to the particles being freely able to roll and slide over each other but a fixed volume is there since there is no gap between them, between the molecules. And in a gas, the particles are most energetic and are spread far from each other and then can, they can go freely wherever they want. Means they use all the space available to them. There are no bonds holding them together. This is why gases have no definite shape because the particles can freely go wherever and no definite volume too because since there are such large gaps between particles they can be compressed, they can be squeezed closer together. So this is all about the forms or the states in which the water exists. So water exists in three, these three states and water can be heated to convert it into vapor. In the same way, what happens when if we leave water in an uncovered vessel on a summer afternoon outside our house? Yes, we will observe that after a few hours we find that the level of water in the vessel decreases and this is because a lot of it would have escaped in the atmosphere in the form of water vapor or steam. And what about the reverse process? Yes, the conversion of the water vapor of the substance to its liquid form is called condensation. So water vapor is also added into the air by the leaves of plants through the process of transpiration. There are other processes, melting, freezing, right, and evaporation, condensation. So basically evaporation and condensation of water takes place on a very large scale on the surface of the earth and its atmosphere. And these processes like evaporation, condensation, freezing, melting, heating, they all play a key role in cloud formation and rain. So always remember that there is also a change of state in between gas, liquid and solid where this evaporation and condensation go, goes on and on. A change of state means an interconversion also occurs between two states of matter like in gas, liquid, liquid, solid, solid, liquid, liquid, gas. 
or solid gas. So boiling, evaporation, vaporization, all this occur. All these processes occur and they play a very important role in cloud formation. So remember always that there are some processes which are not the chemical changes but physical changes. For example, the water molecules are just the same in ice in liquid water, in steam or water vapor. What is different is how they are arranged, how and how strongly they are held together by some forces in the solid, liquid and gaseous state. Like on heating particles gain some energy and move faster and they, more, they are more able to over overcome the forces between the molecules. There are some particles will have enough energy to overcome the attractive force holding the particles together in the liquid. In evaporation and boiling, it is the highest energy that molecules have that they can escape from the attractive forces and the particles lose any order and become completely free to form a gas or a vapor. So energy needed to overcome the attractive forces between particles in the liquid and is taken in from the surroundings. This, this means that heat has Heat is taken in. So evaporation and boiling are other kind of processes. And condensation and melting are other kind of processes. If temperature, if the temperature is high, enough boiling takes place. And boiling is a rapid evaporation anywhere in the bulk liquid. And at a fixed temperature, it requires continuous addition of heat. So the rate of boiling is limited by the rate of heat which is transferred into the liquid. Even evaporation takes place more slowly than boiling at any temperature. And condensation, it also takes place very differently. On cooling, gas particles lose some energy and eventually they become attracted together to form a liquid. That is, they have, have not enough energy to remain free in the gaseous state. So there is an increase in the order as the particles are much closer together and they can form clumps of molecules. So the process requires heat to be lost to the surroundings. That means the heat is given out. So condensation is a different process than evaporation. So these are other processes. These are different processes. Same way when a solid is heated, the particles vibrate more strongly as they gain some energy and the particles' attractive force forces are weakened. Eventually, the attractive forces are too weak and they hold the particles in the structure together in an ordered way and so the solid melts. So this means that the heat is taken in from the surroundings and this process occurs, that is melting. So there is difference between freezing, melting, freezing and melting and there is difference between evaporation and condensation too and these processes play an important role in cloud formation. So now let us discuss about cloud formation, how clouds form. Yes, first of all we should know that what is meant by cloud. Yes, a cloud is composed of millions of little droplets of water. What is it? Yes, a cloud is composed of millions of little droplets of water or ice crystals when temperature is very low. Right? So they are composed of millions of little droplets of water which are suspended in the air. Hence, a cloud can form when water vapor becomes liquid. That is when the humid air is cooled and it condenses on tiny particles. So basically a cloud is a large collection of very really tiny droplets of water or ice crystals. And these droplets are so small and light that they can float in the air too. So how are these clouds, uh, sorry, clouds formed? 
Yes, all air contains water, but near the ground it is usually in the form of an invisible gas called steam or water vapor. So when warm air rises, it expands and cools. And cool air, it can't hold as much water vapor as warm air. So some of the vapor condenses onto tiny pieces of dust that are floating in the air and forms a tiny droplet around each dust particle. So when billions of these droplets come together, they become a visible cloud. Right? So there are several steps of cloud formation. But before that, we should know that why are clouds white in color? So here it is a question that why are clouds white in color? Yes, have you ever given thought that why they are white in color? Don't worry if you don't know. Yes, clouds are white because they reflect the light of the sun. Now try to imagine that light is made up of colors of the rainbow, seven colors. And when you add them all together, you get white color. So the sun appears a yellow color in yellow color because it gives out more yellow light than any other color. And clouds reflect all the colors the exact same amount in the exact amount, the same amount, so they look white in color. And why do clouds turn gray in color? Yes. Why? Sorry. The question is, why do clouds turn gray in color? Clouds are made up of tiny water droplets or ice crystals, usually a mixture of both. We know about it. Right? Tiny water droplets plus ice crystals. So clouds are made up of either tiny water droplets or ice crystals or both of them, much mixture of both. So the water and ice scatter all the light, making clouds appear white in color. So if the clouds get thick enough or high enough, all the light above does not make it through. Hence, it makes it dark in color or it makes it appear gray in color. Also, if there are lots of other clouds around, their shadow can add to the gray color or it can make it multicolored gray appearance. So, with extreme weather, there are survival kits which are a necessity for your family by taking special precautions and checking for hazards before a disaster strikes, you will be much more likely to stay safe in this way. So whenever clouds turn gray in color, just remember that if they are turning too gray or they are too dark means there is an extreme change in the weather. Now my other question is that why do clouds float? Yes, a cloud is made up of liquid water droplets. We know that. And a cloud forms when air is heated by the sun. So as it rises, it slowly cools and it reaches a point where the water condenses forming a cloud. So as long as the cloud and the air that it's made of is warmer than the outside air around it, it floats. Right? And now other question is that how do clouds move? Yes. Remember students that clouds move with the wind. They are pushed along by the jet stream, sometimes traveling at more than 100 miles per hour. So when clouds are a part of thunderstorm, they usually travel at some distance per hour. And how this is how they move. 
Now you must be thinking that why do clouds form at different heights in the atmosphere? This is because of the characteristics of clouds which include the amount of water vapor in it, the temperature, at what height they are. It also includes the factors like the wind and the interplay of the other air masses. So it depends upon a lot of factors that the clouds form at different heights in the atmosphere. Now, let us get back to the steps of cloud formation. Now you will understand more clearly that how the formation of clouds takes place. Yes. First of all, the water vapor is present in the air and warm air along with the water vapor rises in the atmosphere. After that, it condenses on dust particles to form tiny droplets of water. And then several tiny droplets of water come together to form a cloud. So there is one beautiful diagrammatic representation of cloud formation over here. Now listen it carefully and see that the sun evaporates water from lakes and oceans and, air, and as the air rises it cools, right? So the water vapor here, it condenses into tiny droplets of water here you can see in the warm air. Many droplets have combined together now and there are many droplets of water then the first one. This is the first step. When the water vapor is present in air and warm air along with water vapor rises in the atmosphere. So it is rising. Right? Then the droplets crowd together, these water droplets, they crowd together and form a cloud. So when the wind blows the cloud, towards the land, the tiny droplets join together and fall as rain to the ground. And so the water soaks into the ground and collects in rivers and lakes. And so the cycle that never ends has started again. So in this way, formation of cloud takes place and tiny droplets of water come together to form a cloud and then it falls as rain. So in this way, cloud formation takes place. So that was all about different states of matter, sorry, different states of water and about the cloud formation. In the next session, we will learn something more interesting about water. Till then, enjoy and have fun.